constantly. And he sent me a couple of photos his assistant took of the failures. And yeah, I, I agree, this would ruin my day. It'd probably ruin hers too. You're trying to print just two simple models. I mean, models should be something that's super easy. And that's what the system's designed for. But sometimes, you know, sometimes stuff happens. I'm gonna show you a couple things that I think were responsible for the failure and how to increase your odds of a successful print for basic models here. So here's the picture of the tank. You can see here, uh, half most of the models are stuck here on the tank. Let me show you the print platform. There's the print platform you can see there. It almost looks like those models peeled off the, peeled off the supports and they ended up uh, stuck to the bottom of the tank. Uh, you can see here half a model here. You can see this one actually, for the most part, printed okay. I suspect what happened here is that the models were printed horizontally, totally horizontal with supports. Let me illustrate what I mean by that. Here's Ray where I'm going to go ahead. This is a model. This is just the first thing I found out of my uh, file folder. Sorry, it's not the greatest scan, but maybe that's, that's the point here, right? We're not perfect. I went ahead and hit the fix button to generate auto-generate a model base. Uh, this is a Rayware Pro feature. Uh, I have it on good authority that the Rayware Pro subscription will be changed, and this may be an included feature in Rayware 3.0 subscription free. Don't hold me to that though, hold Sprint Ray to it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, take a look at this here. I'm going to take do a couple scenarios. Scenario one is uh, the model as I think they did it, which is they just hit generate supports and they generated supports like this way. The model remains flat and this is what they did because, well, we think we need supports. And then that's what it looks like that print job was. I wasn't there. I didn't see them slice the model, but I suspect that's what happened. Here's another way you could do it. You could rotate it up, not the Y axis, rotate it on the X axis 20 degrees. And then we can go ahead and generate the supports again. And I'll compare and contrast those two methods for you and explain why I think that this method is better. And then I'll show you an experiment. I'll show you the traditional way of doing it, which is, okay, we're going to hit copy here. So the traditional way of doing it, I'll show you that a third way. And then if you stick around to the video, I'll show you the crazy way to do it. Okay, so we're going to reset all this. Okay, so this is the so let's just remember that the upside down one is the tradition is is what I call a traditional one, which is just no supports, flat to the platform. I call it uh, flush to bed, flat to bed, flat to the platform, no supports, supportless, all names for the same thing. Okay, so this is that one here. This is one just horizontal with supports, and this is one tilted up 20 degrees with supports, give or take. So let's go ahead and hit the print preview. And that's the, what the print preview does is show you how each slice is cured and rendered and what the printer sees and does for each layer. I think the print preview is a very handy tool for diagnosing what can go wrong. So every time you 3D print a model, you're printing, you're, you're pushing that platform down. You're, the projector is like curing that layer. You're pulling it up, pushing it back down, like curing the next layer. And with each layer, when during that lift, you have a tug of war, okay? The newly cured layer has to, has to decide whether it's gonna stick to the tank bottom or to the print platform. And for the first layer, uh, it generally will stick to the platform, okay? The way that the, the sprint rate tank has been designed, they show me this big fancy seven layer patent drawing. Uh, could have been a seven layer burrito, I don't know, but the platform is designed to basically slightly rebound and release the print. Uh, it's their kind of improved version of the FEP concept. So the tank is designed to release, if there's given on the first layer, it's designed to release the resin, that newly cured resin layer, and have it stick to that metal platform instead. So the first layers, generally if, you're, if your entire model, if a large proportion of your model sticks to the first layer, you're gonna be okay. So we go to layer two and the layers largely look the same. The general rule is when you have two layers that look the same, um, the tug of war will always win in the proper fashion. And as in the newly cured layer will peel off the tank and stay on the 
uh, printed model slash platform side, right? The model slash platform side. So when you go up in layers here, remember this is the traditional one. The traditional supportless one looks the same all the way through. So every layer, the every layer, it's going to the the platform is going to win because if there's a tie between the old layer and the new layer, the platform will win by design. Sprint Ray's tank is designed to release if there's a tie or if it's close. Here's gonna be, here's where I think this doctor's team members had the, their problem. As you keep advancing up the layers, you're gonna run out of support and right there, right at layer 41. So layer 40 is the top layer of all their supports of that horizontally printed model. Remember, again, you had about four millimeters of support and all of a sudden the flat model starts. So on layer 40, you cure a bunch of little tiny dots. Layer 41, you're printing, all of a sudden you're printing the entire flat surface of that dental model. And so on the print platform side, you have tiny dots. On the tank side, you have the full, you have the full complete surface area of this dental arch. So what's gonna win? You know, this big layer, full layer, or the little dots? Well, the tank, when you have this big full layer, sometimes what's gonna happen is that the tank will win and the platform will lose. And what happens in that event? The supports will break off that will break off the model and then the uh, the newly cured layer stays stuck to the tank instead. And then every successive layer, it just cures on top and you just end up with a print failure. Uh, I call this kind of a shock because what you're doing is you're going from lots of little dots to a sudden shock of lots of the entire model. And so I think that this way of printing is not a good practice. You should not, in general, with any resin printer, sprint ray or otherwise, you shouldn't have a total, you shouldn't go from supports to suddenly having the entire flat big bottom. You don't want to have that. It's because of the reasons I described. You're creating a sudden shock, a sudden rapid and you know exponential increase in surface area from one layer to the next. And that almost inevitably causes the new layer to stay stuck to the tank and then you, your, your, your failure snowball starts. Okay. I want you to contrast that with what we have here on this side, on the screen right side of the print bed. Here's the one I tilted. So you see what the one I tilted, the model starts very gradually. It literally starts with one line of pixels and it gradually increases by a, a few pixels every layer. So there's not that great degree of shock. The model will gradually grow. And so the supports will outnumber or outpower the model fairly easily. And so because of that, the print will succeed. It will take longer because they're, because you know the heel of the model is lifted, but it will, but it will have a much much higher success rate. So that's what I recommend: is go ahead and angle your models 20 degrees, and then hit the supports. Let me let me show you that a little. I'll slow down and show you that a little slower. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. Let's say I've just hit the fix button. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look at the top here. I'm going to rotate the model so it's even with uh, this side. Maybe for the sake of your job, you need to be even this side, but you just want it to be square, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to rotate it 20 degrees. You can use this little resize toolbox, and you're going to rotate it along whichever axis you need to. Now, if you want to rotate along this axis, the answer is X. X is going to be the wide axis. Y is going to be the narrower axis, and Z is going to be the axis that goes vertically up and down. So we've went ahead and rotated on the X axis this way. If your model was facing this way down the plate, then you're going to rotate along the Y axis, but either way, rotate it 20 degrees, then click on the support tool here and then click generate supports. Okay. And when you generate supports this way, you're going to have a much more reliable model print. Uh, that's easy to remove. Now, if you want, as far as for pure speed, as, as far as pure speed is concerned, printing without supports, is going to be the easiest. Just hit reset and print it like this. Why would you one or the other? You would do this method if you wanted to have, this method is probably going to be the most reliable method to print a model. If you want to make sure that you have success over and over again, day in, day out, this will work better because you're using supports, you're, you're, you're going to have easy removal. 
and you're not going to you're going to minimize those tensile forces tensile shock uh, from layer to layer of this method this method here is the simplest to do i didn't have to hit generate supports it's done you can just hit print it's the fastest however you're going to have a very difficult model to remove and if removing models is something you're not good at or you have a tendency to break models in your hands with that sharp razor tool or you're scared of the the sharp uh, chisel tool that we provide or we sprint ray provides then this way is going to be this way here is going to be easier to remove this way here this is what i've always done uh, but if you start to have failures beyond the first layer uh, one popular example i see is when it fails in the middle of the print um, again that could be a tensile shock thing if you print this way what happens is you get your layers it minimizes layer size and so you'll get more successful prints printing at a 20 degree angle it seems to be the optimum there's been some tests done uh, by chitui box uh, that say that 20 percent is the most uh, accurate printing angle on sla resin printers take that as it were the results might be different on your sprint ray pro but uh, that is these are the two methods I would recommend uh, this is going to be very reliable for you. It takes a couple extra clicks, rotate 20 degrees and generate supports, or just print it flat. Uh, those two methods. I will give you a third crazy one. Your minds may vary. I have not tried this, but I've seen my friends do it. They take my they take my Vubase V my version five Vubase, which is designed actually for night guards. They take my Vubase. This is, I think my friend Edward did this. He takes the VU base. This is designed to tilt the night guard on top to on top at 45 degrees. But this is what he does with it. This is the wacky crazy idea. I, you know, I will say your mileage may vary, but you're welcome to, you know, if you're open to trying wacky ideas, um, sure go ahead. I, but what you do is you take this. Uh, I'm going to include it in here just for the sake of completion, just so you're aware that the idea exists. Uh, you take this model here and you, sorry, I'm having a little mouse confusion. You take this model here and you rotate it your 20 degrees. Okay. And then you stick this mo this, uh, VU base underneath it. So in this case, I would go this way. So he sticks VU base version five underneath it and this basically provides a tensile support for the model. So as it's pulling this first layer off, uh, it still prints. I'll show you this under print preview. So basically the first layer of that model is going to be the base wrapped. And so that always prints well. And then the next few layers, you'll see here, the model gradually starts to appear here. It actually starts to appear while the VU base is printing. So it's enclosed in the raft, it's fine. And then the first few layers, so basically up until layer 11, it's over compressed and it's the whole thing prints just fine. So you have a base already printing uh, from within the raft, okay? So, the, so it's supported for that first millimeter by the raft itself. And then the next couple it's supported by itself and then when we get to here, it crosses the spikes by layer 21, it crosses the stripes and then the spikes kind of support it. And somehow I never intended it to be used this way. Uh, but just, I guess I shouldn't, I, I, it always surprises me just how much you can get away with. On, I mean, people say that the, you know, people say that they have failures and stuff, but I'm surprised by somehow how some very creative, more creative people than me have taken this, uh, taken my raft and, and used it beyond what I had intended it for. Again, VUBASE 5 is downloadable on Thingiverse for free. I intended this to support night guards, but they are using it to support a uh, their model. So, you know, to each their own, this is the crazy way. I, I would recommend this way, 20 degrees up with supports. Play around with things, you know, 3D printing is about 3D printing. Part of it is about trying new things and seeing what works. If you are the of the mentality of doctor, I'm really busy. I don't have time to fiddle or F, pick your own F word around 
with different settings and wrap, give me something that works every time. I would say tilting it 20 degrees up and supports should work every single time if your printer is uh, properly set up, if your resin is pre-mixed and everything works, okay? So good luck with everything. I hope this helps in your 3D printing journey. Take care.